we're going to get started on our business. Let me let me get some handouts to everybody who doesn't have one. First, the first handout I'd like to give everybody is a very simple handout. It's regarding three proposed committees that we're going to we're going to entertain. Who does not have a copy of the committee handout? Jamie, do you have one? No. Yours? Commissioner Gamble, do you have one? Thank you. Uh, Captain, you've got one. Ms. Quinn, you've got one. Okay, everybody's got one. Okay, the next handout, now that's the, that's the most important handout, the one I want you to look at closely. Uh, the second handout is the legislation that created the uh, bombing commission, the resolution. Uh, would you pass these down for those of you who don't have it? And would you pass these down for those of you who might not have that? The third handout is an email that right after I got appointed to the bombing commission, I received from the sponsor of the legislation, Bob Mendez, who was a council member, and he indicated what his visions were, which I tend to agree with having, have, having read the resolution, and I just wanted to share those with you. Do you, everybody have a copy? Captain, you got one copy? Okay. Now, let me, let me first of all tell you how much I appreciate the hard work of, of the Vice Chairman Jamie Holland and uh, Investigator Quinn and her job as a recording secretary. She's going to make a report to us today regarding some of the, uh, some of the uh, uh, efforts that have been made since the last meeting regarding the computer, regarding the website, regarding transmission of documents. So our, our objectives in complying with the Public Records Act and the Open Meetings Law is to make sure that we have complete transparency for the public. Also, we've got our legal counsel here, Ms. Ramsey. I appreciate her being here uh, to give us good legal advice, and we appreciate your attendance. Now, I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is our, this is our third meeting uh, pursuant to the open meetings law. It's actually our fourth meeting, but I don't consider the first meeting in March to be uh, a meeting because uh, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, organized uh, like the second meeting, the third meeting, and now the fourth meeting. After this meeting, we'll have nine more meetings before the year ends. Our goal, our goal is to present a report to the uh, Metro Nashville Commission no later than March of 2022. No later than March of 2022. That's nine meetings from today. I intend to the best of my skill and ability to have our meetings last about an hour, but if we have some meetings that might last a little bit longer, it will be because we've got some important business to discuss. Now, what I envision would be that I want everybody on this commission to have a part in preparing the final report. We've got great talent on this commission. We've got public official leaders. We've got criminal investigators. We've got government officials. We've got business people. We've got uh, social type workers. We've got every element of our community that could possibly be interested in this terrible bombing that happened on Christmas Day of 2020. Now, the way that I look at the resolution and the way that usual crimes occur is, first of all, a crime occurs, whether it's a bombing, whether it's a homicide, or whether it's a burglary. The crime occurs. And the first thing that you want is an adequate response. You've got to have an adequate response from various officials, the police, the uh, investigative uh, officials, and I was told I need to sit down. I don't like to sit down. But, I didn't tell you. I said, can you? Uh, yeah, I can sit down. All right. I can speak better when I stand up, but it can, I'll sit down. But anyway, bottom line is this. We've got a response. Just like on any crime, 
you've got to have a response from various entities, the police, first responders, people, people who take care of people. Then after that, you've got an investigation. Uh, after the investigation and when you finally solve the crime, then you've got lessons learned or prevention. So I kind of break it down into three parts. And as you'll see on our, uh, as you'll see on our handout, first, the first part will be uh, the actually, actually number two, the bombing and responses committee uh, should actually be number one so far as, as timing is concerned. Number two would be the criminal investigations committee and number three would be lessons learned committee. What ideally that I would like and what I propose would be for the first two committees, the bombing and the response committee, and then the criminal investigation committees, for them to read and study the after action reports from all of the agencies that responded or all of the agencies that investigated, and then come up with a report to no later, no later than November of 2021. No, no later than November 2021. And then uh, uh, if, if they find some gaps, if they find some gaps in maybe what should have been done and what actually was done, I would certainly welcome them to bring that to the attention of the chair and of the secretary and of the vice chair, bring that to our attention, and then we can call witnesses during that time. They don't, we don't need to wait until November if there are gaps in between what happened and what maybe should have happened, we can do that. But the third committee would be the committee, the, the lessons learned committee, which, which could very well be the most important committee, and that is they can summarize all of the other two committees and then come up with lessons learned uh, so that we can hopefully prevent this from happening in the future. Now, we may tinker with these, but what I would like for each of you to do is not necessarily put down the committee that you'd be most interested in, but put down the committee that you think that you would be most valuable in, uh, and it's particularly a value to the public uh, generally. And you, you're not limited to one committee. If you want to say, uh, I want to be on the Bombing and Responses Committee, that's my first choice. My second choice would be Lessons Learned. Well, that's fine. Put it down. If you've got some comments that you want to make to me uh, before I appoint these committees, and also I'm going to ask for a vote here in just a minute for you to give me the authority to not only appoint the committees but appoint the chair because I'm going to leave it up to the chairs of each of these committees to make sure that we meet the timelines on the reports. But I want you to put down this so that in the meantime, I can come back and I can put together these committees so that we can have some organization. Are there any questions? Well, we are, we're, we're, we're very fortunate that we're going to have part of the Bombing and Responses Committee and also the Criminal Investigation Committee. We're going to have a report today from one of our commissioners, Council Member uh, Gamble, is going to report to us here in just in just a minute. But before we do that, I would like uh, to may I hear a motion? Do I hear a motion that the chair appoint these committees and in his discretion appoint the chair of each committee uh, going forward for the future? Uh, do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? Moved and second the motion. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. That's basically my report. I would like to say also that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I interject a question? Yeah. Along for the lessons learned committee, would that necessarily include any recommendations regarding public? safety improvements as contained in the caption of the ordinance that created this organization. That's going to be up to the chairman of the, uh, if you're asking Paul Summers, yes. Okay. If you're asking, if you're asking, uh, that, that's going to be up to the chairman of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, that particular committee, and I'd say it's probably going to be a yes. Thank you. I think that's what the public wants to hear. All right. Uh, we need, uh, 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 
Ms. Sanderson uh, said that I omitted something, and she's exactly right. We need, we've got a copy of the minutes of the previous meeting. Has everybody read the previous meeting's minutes? Do I hear a motion they be approved or submitted? So moved. Second. 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 Moved to second. And all in favor of the minutes of the previous meeting be approved or submitted, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? They pass. Thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. Uh, at this time, before we hear from uh, Council Member uh, Gamble, I'd like to hear from Chief Swan. I know he's got another commitment coming up, uh, but uh, uh, we'd appreciate hearing from him. Uh, I know that I noticed that after our after our uh, our meeting in May, we got some documents from uh, uh, Miss Miss Kendra, and I made a copy of those documents. And this is, this is how big those particular documents were. So, uh, do we have some more documents, and do we have a system uh, uh, chief as to how to receive those documents? Yes, good morning. Um, thank you guys for um, definitely being here and volunteering your time. I think this is a very important committee that's been put together. And uh, Mr. Summers, the chairman, has really I think uh, articulated well the purpose of it, and we're all here to participate to make sure that uh, this, uh, if something of this nature happens again, we'll just be better prepared for it and all the actions that we take. Um, so my report uh, basically is just going to um, uh, mention the fact that we did, uh, the fire department's done their after action re uh, review. It's been uh, turned in, uh, and as well as the the video that was requested by the committee, and I know uh, speaking to the chairman, uh, I think they're going to wait until September. Is that to actually put this video we out? We can do we we, uh, we can do it next month. Would y'all like to do it next? We'll, we'll do it next month. Okay, it probably make Joseph okay. and Kendra happy. So since y'all pressure them to get it done quick, right. uh, <laughs> I'm joking. Now they they did they put a lot of time into getting it done working. Uh, uh, with um, um, a collective of uh, other groups to, to make sure that it will be appropriate. And I think um, it will just de depict the, the brave actions of, uh, of this of Metro uh, Police and also Fire Department and others that participated into it. So, um, and so the after action report has been done. Uh, as you stated also, uh, now you have the opportunity to view it. Uh, just like you do all the others. Everybody's already uh, very much aware of the fact that you can call in a department for them to come in to explain in detail or for something that doesn't make sense. They'll be at, we will have a representative from that department to come in to actually um, to um, walk through that uh, after action review or to answer any questions that you may have. So that's just my report. I, I'm very happy with that. I think and I hope that uh, the secretary, Marjorie, is finding um, the participation of all the departments very useful. Uh, I think we put out that you guys would be requesting it, and they understand it's not coming from the fire department. We're very happy from the Office of Emergency Management and the fire department. Our role was to begin this process with you guys, but uh, due to the um, sensitive, sensitive nature, we want to make sure that we're non-biased. We're outside just here to assist in any way, but we have no... Um, input other than any other department, but we're just here as assistants. So thank you very much for this thank time. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, at this time, before we hear from uh, Council Member Gamble, I would like to turn it over to Investigator Quinn. The reason I call her investigator, she used to be a TBI investigator. Once an investigator, you're always an investigator. But Investigator Quinn, would you tell us about uh, how the public... Uh, can review those after action reports and tell us about how from now on we're going to handle the agenda, the minutes, and any documents that are submitted in this committee so that the public can see it all. Can you tell us how to do that? I think so. Thank you, Chairman Summers. Thank you. Um, we have a SharePoint site that has been created uh, for us by um, the fire department. Um, it will be accessible to the public. Um, I think, John, do they go to the Nashville.gov to get to this? Yeah, so we can, I can work to provide a, a direct link. Link? Yeah. 
Um, and, and so the public will find um, all the documents that we're going to be reviewing, all the after action reports, as well as um, we'll create a folder within that SharePoint that will also house the agendas and the minutes once they are approved. Um, I think that would be a good idea um, to make those public in that way as well. Um, the meetings are publicly noticed um, at least a week in advance, um, and those will be um, publicly available as well. Um, have the members been able to access the SharePoint site with no problems? Okay. Um, the other thing we're going to do is once we send out a calendar invite, I will attach any documents that we're going to review for that particular meeting in the calendar invite, and that will, that will help you, I think, um, access those documents uh, as well. So we'll attach those to the calendar invites. That way you can always go back to previous months and look at the agenda or um, uh, minutes that that are uh, that we review during that meeting. Um, I also did put the video link in the calendar invite so um, you can review that uh, before we show it next July or, or next uh, at the next meeting in July if you if you so choose. Does that cover it? One more uh, the November meeting will not be the last. Tuesday of the month will, but will be the fourth right. Tuesday of the month. There was a, there was a uh, snafu regarding the, that scheduling fourth or last, but it will be the fourth Tuesday, which is November the 21st. November the 21st. It's All the, other entries are. Yeah. The it's the 30th. 30th. Okay. I'm confused now. <laughs> <laughs> so the fourth. The fourth Tuesday was the 23rd, and I think we had a conflict okay. with the room. And so I think we're moving it to Tuesday the 30th. Is that correct? November 30th, yes. All right. Tuesday, November 30th. Sorry, 30th. And uh, I would also just say that um, uh, Ms. Loney uh, canceled all of her calendar invites for these meetings um, to take her out of the loop, and so I will resend those. Uh, to the council members um, and then be attaching documents um, as we as they come up to for review um, And so I will resend those um, In the next week or so Thank you. All right Anything further? Thank you. uh, At this time I Uh, who was on the uh, Metropolitan National Police Department uh, Commission uh, that reviewed the law enforcement investigation regarding the bombing, that is the criminal investigation. They have produced uh, an after-action report which probably has is on our website or at least it will be soon. Yes, it, it should uh, already be there. She's going to give us a copy of that and she's also going to refer to the uh, she's also going to refer to the uh, ATF and the Metropolitan National Police Department Joint Task Force recommendations. Just one page. Just one page. All right. Thank you, Chairman Summers. Thank uh, you. I will start off uh, with a summary of the special, uh, uh, sorry, of the uh, MNPD after action review. Uh, on June 2nd, the MNPD Nash Metro Nashville Police Department uh, released its after action review to the public and media. Uh, that after action review report is available on the MNPD website. Chief Drake announced the creation of an after action review earlier this year in January to examine events leading up to the bombing in downtown Nashville and to determine whether any gaps exist from which MMPD can learn in the future. Specifically, the after action review focused on MMPD's response to an incident that occurred on August 21st, 2019 involving suicide bombing suspect Anthony Warner. The purpose of the action after action review was to look at what occurred, what mistakes, if any, were made in handling of information, and whether any changes to policy or procedures were needed to help keep Nashville safer. The after action review board consisted of five persons, including myself, uh, Deputy Chief Dwayne Green, Attorney Professional Standards Division Head Kathy Morante, 
Nashville attorney and former United States attorney for the Middle District of Tennessee, Ed Yarbrough, and Community Oversight Board Executive Director, Jill Fetcher. We met uh, from January through May of 2021, so for about five months, we met in person and corresponded through email, examined multiple MMPD reports, documents, 911 calls related to the incident on August 21st, 2019, and conducted interviews with individuals and officers who were at the scene. Uh, since this after action review was initiated by MMPD and not the Metro Council like our special bombing commission, uh, the meetings were not public. Uh, they were not recorded, and individuals interviewed were not sworn under oath. However, the board had full autonomy over the process. Uh, we took copious notes of all of the uh, interviews and worked together in coming to, to the conclusions for the report without interference from uh, Chief Jake or, or leadership in, in the MMPD. Of course, we did have Chief Duane Green and Catherine Morante with the MMPD on the committee, and uh, they work within the, the committee itself in arriving at our conclusions. Uh, we follow guidelines from the guide to the after action review uh, document, uh, which is a published document on after action reviews. We followed those guidelines and use that as a framework for the after action review report. The review report is categorized into two specific areas, what went well and why, and what can be improved on and how. Additionally, uh, there are subcategories within the framework to evaluate separately the pat patrol response, follow-up investigation, and departmental procedure as it relates to the after action review. So what went well and why? It was determined uh, by the After Action Review Board that the patrol response was handled appropriately and all response policies and procedures were followed successfully. And that is in regards to the patrol response to the 911 call uh, that directed patrol officers to the home of Pamela Perry, who was the friend of the suspect, Anthony Warner, and follow up at Anthony Warner's house after receiving uh, information from Ms. Perry that led to uh, investigation of him as, as potentially building a bomb at his home. Um, the response, while the, while the patrol response we deemed was appropriate, there were some deficiencies found in the follow-up investigation and the departmental procedures as it related to the after-action review. So what can be improved on and how? The board identified seven deficiencies in the follow-up investigation and departmental procedures, and they are outlined in the eight-page uh, after-action review report. Uh, the report uh, also provides recommendations for improvement in regards to those deficiencies. So just to give an example, uh, one of the follow-up investigation deficiencies that we found was that the um, hazardous device officer, unit officer, made several attempts to contact uh, Ms. Perry by phone and went to the residence of Mr. Warner on numerous numerous occasions after the August 21st incident. Uh, however, though the, the dates and times and outcomes of those attempts were not documented. So there was no documentation to, to justify that those attempts had been made. And so there was no way to know if there was adequate follow-up on that investigation. Uh, because of that. So one of the recommendations is to require uh, all of the HDU officers and investigative uh, team to document efforts to attempt anyone, even if it doesn't result in, in any contact, because that was what was said is that, uh, that although they attempted to make contact, contact was not made, so it was not documented. So we are recommending all of, all of the contact needs to be documented, whether it's um, uh, contact is made or not. 
Uh, also, one of the recommendations or, or deficiencies we found was that the hazardous device unit case was not closed and remained open for over a year without any updated investigation or documentation. Uh, so we were told during the interviews that normally those cases remain open and nothing is done unless another lead comes in or a tip. Uh, so we made the recommendation to that that there needed to be random quarterly audits of all HD hazardous device unit case files to ensure that the best inve investigative practices are being used and all documentation is being properly completed. And Chief Drake has accepted and moved forward in implementing all of the recommendations that the board uh, made in regards to this particular after action review report. Oh, and with that, I'll take any questions that you may have regarding the after action review report before moving into the uh, memorandum of agreement legislation. Question. Uh, <clears throat> tell us about the investigation of Mr. Warner and why law enforcement is of the uncontroverted opinion that he was the bomber and that he acted alone. That has to do more with the uh, FBI investigation that we really didn't get into. Uh, the, the scope of our investigation really focused on the 911, the, the August 21st incident. Um, so I'm hopeful that in this uh, body that we'll get more information about what actually happened on the day of the bombing and uh, the investigation surrounding Anthony Warner and the bombing itself. But we did not cover the scope of that in our investigation. I know that I know that the uh, that the federal authorities were in charge, but that uh, that there was an open community of a law enforcement uh, operation. So there was much communication going on between uh, the state and local authorities as well as the FBI. But uh, is is the FBI, is the TBI, or is the Metropolitan National Police Department going to give us an after action report as to the criminal investigation on Warner and why and, and why they came up with what they did? I think we should ask for that. I will say that during the process of our uh, <coughs> interviews with us, with the HDU um, officer. Uh, and, and others that were involved with transferring information over to the FBI that they did uh, send that information. The patrol officers and, and the initial officers of, of, at the scene did send a request to the uh, FBI and the special um, bombing unit to do a background on Mr. Warner from that initial um, tip that they got that he was possibly building bombs. And, and, and that review did not result in any information. He was not uh, listed on it. Right. He wasn't listed on any watch list or, or anything like that. Uh, Councilwoman <clears throat> Gamble, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, is that part of the, uh, and this is on page seven, um, the follow-up investigations deficiency, mm -hmm. is, that's a part of what you're talking about. That's part of the they know and they're aware there were deficiencies. Is that what you're talking about right there, that last part? Uh, yes, as far as I uh, think it's on page seven, number three. Uh, uh, with, <clears throat> it's actually the last oh, one. Okay. Um, where it's uh, point one, two, three, four. It, it's a lot of times um, when communicating across multiple uh, agencies, um, I think they're recognizing that, and, and these were... Is this on the right side, the recommendations to yes. prove that? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just to, just to uh, sparse that out a little bit, so there we recognize a deficiency that there is not a process in place regarding case closure and criminal and counterterrorism cases can remain open without follow-up, and the recommendation was to initiate a four-part conf uh, confirmative closure prior to officially marketing a case inactive and that four-part uh, process 
would involve have, making a reasonable attempt to follow up with the reporting person, doing a federal database checks uh, shall be conducted through the FBI, which that was done. Uh, state and local database checks shall be conducted through MMPD uh, and other uh, organizations. And then the uh, special investigative department shall be conducted for final database. And there should be sharing of information and communication throughout that entire process. Uh, Commissioner, what one police or investigative agency could we go to that could tell us Warner did it, Warner did it by himself or with others, and Warner's dead? Well, I, I would suggest that that would be the FBI and possibly the ATF and DEA, several agencies, but led by the FBI. Have those agencies responded to request uh, Chief Spahn, Spahn regarding the after-action report? Have they made any after-action reports? Well, yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, there are, there are a couple of documents in the, um, in the SharePoint. Uh, I see the FBI timeline. Um, and there are some other things. I'll, I'll make a review of that okay. um, and see what's missing. Well, that, that's, that's what I'm talking about, these, these different committees. Like, for example, the, uh, the Criminal Investigation Committee, if they determine that, that the report uh, that Council Member Gamble just gave us is a great report from 2019 up until the bombing, then that's a great report. But... We don't. We've got some gaps from from the. We've got some gaps involving the criminal investigation right. aspect, and 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 that that's why that particular committee, in my vision, needs to contact the FBI, contact the ATF, contact the TBI, and say, hey, the investigation's over based on what we've heard in the paper, or what we read in the paper. Tell us what happened. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Agreement. Yes. Okay. Question? Yes, ma'am. Um, Council Member Gamble. Yes. Um, was there discussion in this um, after action committee about um, the Metropolitan National Police Department um, putting a member on the Joint Terrorism Task Force at the FBI? Yes, that was one of the recommendations that we had in the departmental structure. Uh, we found that there's a deficiency in uh, the way that the hazardous device unit officer. Um, communicates with leadership in the MMPD. And so they, it was suggested that a joint uh, terrorist, what is it called, joint terrorism task force mm -hmm. officer, which was a position that they had in the department but had not been filled. Right. And so the recommendation was that we needed to fill that position so that that person could be the conduit and, and uh, contact between the hazardous device unit the uh, patrol unit and other units within the department to make sure that leadership was aware of everything going on. And did the AAR, the AAR committee um, sort of hear from the TBI Fusion Center, the Fusion Center that's housed within TBI, um, which is sort of the, the, the central intelligence hub here in the state of Tennessee, mm -hmm. um, and whether or not MNPD had made use of the vast amount of information contained within the Fusion Center? either during the investigation of Warner, um, during, you know, right during the bombing mm -hmm. and after, and what the what role the Fusion Center had to play in, in either the before or after of the incident? Now, I'm not familiar with the Fusion Center. <laughs> that, that's an investigative name I haven't heard before. But to your point, uh, it was recommended that monthly reviews of all cases by the Hazardous Device Unit uh, the ATF, the FBI, uh, were discussed at an explosive summit that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, this, the explosive summit is similar to the homicide summit, I guess, is where all of the key department leaders come together and discuss cases. Uh, so they are recomm we're recommending that this hazardous device unit be a part of that summit and share information in regards to cases, uh, whether they're uh, open or, or investigating, uh, share with that, with that group in that summit. Uh, with your permission, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to 
check with the Fusion Center and request that they give a, pre a short presentation to this council on what the value add would be or would have been um, before, during, or after this incident. Um, and the advantages that MNPD might realize by a more collaborative approach mm -hmm. um, to, the, to a relationship with the Fusion Center. Uh, you certainly have my permission. I'm just trying to uh, find out when we need to do it. Uh, uh, next month, we're going to obviously have the, uh, the the video regarding the bombing. Uh, uh, I would envision that the either the Criminal Investigative Committee or the Response Committee would make such a request. But if you, as the uh, as the movement and as the as the secretary, want to make that if you want if you want to make that overture you have my permission and let's put it on the agenda let's 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 don't waste any time obviously that's a gap that we need to have answered well and as the assistant special agent in charge over the fusion center for 11 years i know what the value add is before during and after but i think the fusion center needs to come and present that i know you do and i think that's an excellent idea and i'm asking you to contact okay. them and put them on the agenda September, for September, October, somewhere. Let's September? let's do it. Let's do it in uh, next month is uh, uh, July. Let's do it in August. August. Okay, I'll see if they can be prepared for the August meeting That's and right. do a ten to fifteen minute presentation. That'd be great. And this this is the kind of gap I'm talking about. We we clearly we clearly have got from what it all appears from the council member a good report regarding 2019. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. To the bonnet, good report. Uh, uh, we, we can we can we can say what we should have done, recommendations, so on and so forth. But so far as the big gap of uh, the big gap of who did it and 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 why did he or she do it, and uh, did they do it by themselves, and is that person is the only suspect dead? We don't have that, and some we got to have somebody because I think the, I, I know the public wants to know that exactly. That's a gap. That's what I'm talking about, gaps. Okay. In, yes, Investigator sir. Quinn, when, um, when we get Fusion Center to come, based on council members' representation that it was a new concept, um, could you have them start at a very macro level and dumb it down for me specifically? Like, mm -hmm. who are they? Where do they get their funding? Who, who do they collaborate with and under what authorities? Mm -hmm. And then hopefully that will help me understand. And then thereafter, action assessment would be interesting. I'd like to see if they were being accessed for information, data, or help during and after. That would be great. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, the ATF uh, report, uh, the ATF uh, task force recommendation. Yes. So at our uh, last meeting, June 15th, I guess it was, we passed, the council, Metro Council passed a resolution, RS 2021-999, uh, which established a memorandum or approved a memorandum of agreement, a memorandum of understanding between the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive, the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department, the Metropolitan Nashville Fire Department, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, and the Tennessee Bureau of, in of Investigation as it relates to the Metro Nashville Arson and Explosive Task Force, which is a collective coordination of resources and assets to investigate the criminal misuse of fire and explosives in Nashville. Now, this, uh, this memorandum of understanding between these groups is believed to enhance the investigation of criminal violations of law involving fire, arsons, and explosives within Nashville. The pro purpose of the task force is to investigate crimes involving fire, arson, and explosives in Davidson County, and the ATF special agent in charge will have control over all operations of the task force. Each agency agrees to assign at least two task force officers. Uh, all of the officers, of course, must uh, undergo a security clearance. Uh, the, the MOU does not require any funding. 
and uh, any agency may withdraw from participation in the task force within 90 days of written notice. So one question came up by uh, Councilman at Large, Bob Mendez, about this legislation during uh, the discussion on the council floor, and actually he asked it in the public safety meeting as well. Did this memorandum of, a of understanding come as a result of the uh, bombing and the MMPD after action review? And it was told by us from uh, Commander Chris Gilder, who's also the council uh, liaison, that discussions about this MOU were brought up in October of 2020, which would have been prior to the December 25th bombing and that it was suggested by the ATF uh, special agent in charge for Nashville, and he got the recommendation from someone new to the uh, ATF um, office uh, who came from another city. He, he, he made the recommendation that we needed something uh, like this in place. So while it appears that the uh, discussion and and the development of the MOU happened after or before or prior to the bombing on December 25th it definitely will help enhance uh, safety and and will promote and engage more collaboration between these uh, investigative agencies surrounding uh, cases involving fire arson and explosives Commissioner Talbert ATF, that, th those are the feds, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. And uh, you probably, you've, the FBI was in charge of this entire investigation. The ATF was part of it. And then at the state level, the TBI was part of it. And then at the uh, Metropolitan Nashville level, the uh, Metropolitan Nashville Police Department was part of it. It's my understanding anecdotally that there was good communication amongst all of them. The feds, if they had wanted to, could have taken over the entire investigation. But it's my understanding that there was good communication with all of them. Is that your understanding, council member? Yes, that's yeah. my understanding. Yeah. But again, this special commission could get a deeper dive into that uh, those outcomes and that investigation in our work. Right. Any other question of Council Member Gamble about either the Joint Task Force recommendation or their investigation regarding 2019 until the bombing? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what I'd like to do is attach um, these documents as exhibits to the minutes. That'll be fine. If approved, okay. Yeah. Just as long as some way or another the public can access them. I gave everybody a copy of the resolution that creating the Special Bombing Review Commission, 2021-612. Um, I also gave everybody on the commission a copy of an email sent to me by the uh, uh, by the resolution sponsor Bob Mendez on the on the uh, council member uh, who gave us his opinion as to what the uh, special bombing review commission was supposed to do. Does anyone have any questions, comments, or critiques, Mr. Holler? No. Commissioner. Commissioner? No. No, sir. No, sir. Thank you. Will everybody take the time to circle and designate the committee that they think they could provide the most worth? Not what might be more interesting to you, but one that they feel like they could provide the most worth to this commission. Uh, and if you have any comments, uh, any suggestions, feel free to do that. Put your name and uh, your email address and so on and so forth on that. And if you don't mind, give that to me before you leave. Always, too, if you have any questions whatsoever, 
My phone number, my cell number is 615-557-4577. 557-4577. And I was telling one of our members, I well, think he was commissioned to get that on, numbers. Well, no. On Saturday, I got 11 telephone calls to the five, from the 557 number telling me I needed to look into an extended warranty. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how inadequate I was. 557-4577 five, five, seven, five, seven, seven is my number. Call me anytime you want to. Is there any other business that we have omitted that needs to come before the commission at this June 2021 meeting? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chairman. I have a question about the uh, after action reviews. So will it be the, the charge of our entire committee yes. to read all of the after action reviews, regardless of what committee you serve on? That is, that the, the report that we intend to submit to the Metropolitan National City Metropolitan Council in March of 2022 will be a majority vote, hopefully a unanimous vote, but at least a majority vote of this commission. If somebody vehemently objected to something, they are free to submit a minority report if they want to. But hopefully we have a unanimous report if you are on a committee, that all that means is it, you're, you're doing that work of that committee, but ultimately we're going we're gonna to combine those three committees and hopefully the third committee, uh, the uh, Lessons Learned Committee, will put all three committees together into one final report. Ideally, I would like to have a report, and I think the public would like to have a report, We've got all kind of documents that we're going to get. I don't want that to be part of the report. I want, I want that to be an, an, an appendage to the report. I want the report to read where people can read it and understand it and answer all the questions that were submitted to us as a result of the resolution, kind of like the report that y'all did. Now, if they want to have a deeper dive and to go into what the fire department did, they can go back on the website and they can look into that. We'll just summarize what the fire department did. Mm -hmm. uh, and the time frame I'm looking at is by November. The first two committees, the uh, a response committee and the criminal investigation committee should, should have done their work and can submit a draft. And then between... And, but December, January, and February, the third committee, or, the, or the, actually the third committee, plus with the with the help of uh, uh, the entire group, will put together the report. And I would like to submit that report no later than March of 2022 in a readable form, and have all of the the documents there. So if the public wants to look at, they can look at it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if once we get to the place where the, the committees, particularly the Criminal Investigation Committee and the Bombing Response Committee are, are ready to present their summary and make suggestions for agencies that we need to actually bring in to interview, will those of us who are not necessarily on those committees still be encouraged to participate as questions of our interviewees? and uh, participate in that process, or will that be left to those committees? Absolutely everybody. Okay. Great. Captain, do you have a question? No, sir. Investigator Quinn? No, sir. Ms. Anderson? No. No, sir. Ms. Dahl? Commissioner? Okay, well, take your time and, 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 and your preferences as to your expertise, experience, not necessarily your interest, but as to your expertise and your interest. And uh, Ms. Ramsey, do you have any questions or comments? No, sir. Thank you. And when you, uh, when you finish, give them to me, and then you 
We will see you on July the 27th. Make sure I'm right about that day. July 27th at 10 a.m. here in this conference room. That's right, July the 27th. Yes, sir. Just a special shout out to Investigator Quinn. She's pulling, you know, 150% duty for all of us. Your, uh, your invites and stuff with all the attachments make my life so much easier. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. Great work. I, I cannot, I cannot second or third that motion any better. She's done it for me too. Thank you very much for bringing that up. Thank you. You're very organized. We appreciate you. And you're going to call, talk to the Fusion Center. I am going to talk to the Fusion All Center. All right, good deal. <laughs> All right, when you're ready to leave, just hand me, hand me your report. Any of them? I thought you were going to mark which one you're interested in. Well, I thought the, the question there. Oh, okay, God, uh, never mind, never mind, never mind. The blank. I was going to say, yeah, got yeah. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. There being no objection, we are, are adjour adjourned until July the 27th at 10 o'clock Central Time, right here in this same room. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.